Hello guys, this is Sneff Hacker here, and today I'm going to do a really short video on hacking A Legend of Zelda, so let's get started. I'm not really going to do an introduction, it was pretty much self-explanatory, so um, here we go. Keep in mind right here, guys, all of these variables are zero. Watch what happens when we go to the next room. Right here, they turn into zero, zero, E. Now let's see when we freeze one at 3.50. Notice, these tektites load in every level, will load in every level because it's frozen. What, it, what happens here is, the game decides which enemies to spawn based on what's right here, so let's use this knowledge to our advantage and do a execute add right right point to this spot. Let's see what happens. As we can see here, oh, that's not what we want. Here we go. That was clearing out all the enemies in the game. Here we go. Number seven. As we saw before, the slope room has Octorox, so let's see where it's loading this variable from. It's loading it from this address 2, so that means it's where I have to hit a breakpoint on address 2. Now you might see a problem here. Address 2 is like one of the first addresses on the stack in the, I mean, addresses. So it's very frequently used, so it's very unlikely that the, um, it's basically always going to hold something else, so we're going to have to add a condition here. We're going to add, we're assuming the accumulator will load the octorog, so here we go, do this, run, and that condition is rare enough that it doesn't load, so. Try this again. Huh. Let's make sure. Accumulator. Yes. Here we go. Notice here. When does accumulator become seven? It comes that cut when it loads four seven. It's anded, and it becomes four. Wait, no, 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 no. Come seven, so. Let's ex verify this by going into the view. Oh, nest memory, actually. Let's stick there. And look for, what is it again? 69F6. Let's see what's that. F. Dang it, why am I forgetting? 69F6. course, always back up your ROMs if you do it like this, because you can royally screw them up like this. Here we go, Octorok. 47. Let's change this to say 4E and see what happens. Let's disable these. Let's exit the room and enter again. Voila! We got tektites. And that is as simple as it is, say, to change the enemies loaded in a row. This is, oh crap, 69F6. Right, that's the ROM address. I mean, that's it's, its address in memory. Let's not die right now. So let's change this back and do a search. Search the string. I'm almost certain there's a better way to do this, but... Uh, spare me, guys. 47... 80... 40... 47... 80... 40... Probably not the right one, I'm sure I forgot, but I think that's the right one, so let's do this. 
since I need to make sure it's correct. Let's verify it. See if that was the correct change. Voila! Tektites. That did not take a lot of time, and luckily that was a very easy thing to do. So without further ado, let's do something else that's a little simple in comparison. Okay, let's... I'm gonna change it back because I don't want that a permanent change. Let's go into the ROM. Notice I don't have my sword yet. And since I did a lot, some of the stuff ahead of time, I'm gonna know the sword is stored in inventory at seven, six, five, seven. So we're gonna do state, save state here and see this. Notice it becomes one. So, say we wanna pick up the master sword or magic sword when we pick it up. Let's. Let's just add a break right break point here and reload from save state and see what happens. Where is the code that shows us what sword we picked up? Now looking at this, you can tell that since there's an RTS right here, you can logically assume this is the beginning of the new subroutine, so let's double check this by going to the rank memory address. 747C. I'm not positive that this is correct, but it, I'd be surprised if it's not. I don't remember looking this one up ahead of time, but let's see what happens. Since I'll set this to 2 and see if it's the Master Sword. Actually, every time you reload a save state, you have to update that, so let's see what happens. No. I think I've still got the same sword, actually. I think I still stole the wooden sword. Let's double check. I think I still have a wooden sword, so let's... I don't remember if this guy died one head. It's been a long time. Anyways, let's see if we need to do something else. I'm gonna do a memory freeze on this and verify the situation. No, it's not actually the correct location. Oh, memory address A, of course. That happens sometimes. Again, that's gonna be another common memory address, so. I'm gonna have to. I just happen to have this active already, so let's see. Let's set this to 2. No, actually, it needs to be set to 1. Excuse me. Now let's try this again. Here we go. Accumulator 1. Let's go here. Where does this information come from? Aha! 72C9 in the wrong. Is 2 1. That looks a little funny, but that should be what we're looking for. 7 2 C 9? Yeah. Okay. 7 2 C 9. 21. Let's. That might make it the Master Sword, so. But I'm not positive because I haven't actually. Oh, yep. See? Master Sword. It's our item. So, now we can start with the Master Sword if we want. That also didn't take a lot of time. So... Let me switch to one more thing that might be interesting. And to do that, I'm gonna do a little inventory tweak just to speed things up. I think this is going to be the address for the candle. Let's memory freeze that and check. No, it's not. Mm, let's look again. Maybe I meant 6-5. Yep, there we go. So I'm going to use 
is this candle? Actually, well, I don't give myself a mass magic sword. Which is address three? Which is number three, by the way. And I'm gonna make my way to the blue ring and see how to turn that into, say, the red ring. Because wouldn't that be interesting if you can buy the red ring and not the blue ring? Maybe not, but for the sake of this how-to hack video, well, it's good enough for this. Actually, save state in case we need to. I'm not really trying hard to live. And here we go, the blue ring. And if I'm gonna buy that, I'm gonna need some rupees, so... Here we go, 255 rupees should be enough. Now let's see what, where the memory... It should be 662, let's check. We got a 1. It becomes 1. And you know what this is? This guy's... This is the armor, basically, which, as you can tell, Link is now a different color. Takes half damage. So... Since we know damage goes up when we grab the ring, what you do to figure out where the ring is, is first figure out... Because you have to assume Damage will go up as soon as you pick up the ring, so let's see what happens in the code right when we have the damage resistance increase. So I did break point there. Damage is stored right now. Let's see. Memory address again, we have A. So let's look up handy A. It seems to be happen frequently in this game. Address A is used a lot for items, it seems, so... Let's see... 72DA. Interesting. So let's see what's at 72DA. Well, more specifically, let's see what happens when we modify 72DA. Which, I'm gonna actually reload the state, see what happens. 72DA. Da 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 da! And it say 22. And look, it's a red ring. Just like that, red ring. Now let's see what happens. Let's see if damage resistance right here goes up. Notice A is 2, which is effectively, which we just turned the blue ring into the red ring, which gives us double damage resistance. How sweet is that? Double the damage resistance, sweet. But guess what? We can invent a new ring, and I'll show you, it's a lot simpler than you would believe. 72DA changes to 24, for example. Actually, that's not the one I wanted. 23, we got a black ring. And as you can imagine, well, we're pink, which is not what we expected, but that means we doubled our damage resistance yet again. So instead of losing half a heart, not two hits. We lose a heart with half with four hits, so... There we have it with that, guys. I think that's probably all I felt like showing today, but... You know what, with all that information, there's actually a lot you can do, but... Um, I guess one more thing just for the... Just for the hell of it. If I recall correctly, I'm gonna show a real quick thing. This is like for all games. This is like 
a PPU attribute table. Now, I don't know if um, you guys might already know about this, but just in case you guys didn't understand what the attribute table is, you know, basically, it's a, as you saw right there, defines the color palette used for a 16 by 16 pixel area on the screen, so this is basically how we modify the graphics in the different areas, so all laughs is the dead area, put 22s everywhere and you got colorful greens, and yeah, now there's obviously more to it, so that's why so glitchy looking, but basically that's what the attribute table does in case you guys didn't understand it or were interested, curious, or whatever. So I'm going to wrap it up with that, guys, and in case I feel like doing another video on on um, The Legend of Zelda and hacking more stuff, I'll probably do it, but it's late night, so I think I'll leave it at that. So thanks for watching, guys, and um, I'll catch you next time.